Well, this is a big box, isn't it? And as you would expect, a big box has a big model. And in this box, we have a giant crawler crane. The whole package weighs over 16 kilos and the model itself over 13 kilos. But all we're looking at is the outer shipping carton. And when we dig deeper, we get first sight of the model box. It's the Liebherr LR11000 Crawler Crane and it's by NZG and it's model number 1029. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. And out rushes an assembly manual for the model and we'll look at that again in a minute. For the next part it's handy to have a forklift truck available, but if not you'll just need good old muscles to separate the trays. And as you can see there are loads of parts very well packed. Complete out of the box? It is not. Let's dive into the assembly instructions and see what we've got. There's a picture of each of the trays and some of the smaller parts. And after that we're into pictures which describe the various stages of assembly. The instructions are reasonably clear and include weaving diagrams. But some more pictures and details would certainly help an inexperienced builder. The instructions show two particular configurations and we will be building the version with an 84 meter boom. More instructions follow and the instructions suggest you need two people to raise the boom when it's built. And one thing that's immediately apparent are the number of handrails that have to be fitted. We finish with some hook weaving diagrams. With the arrival of the first part of the crane, let's check out how much a crawler track weighs. And it's one pound five ounces. And that's just over 600 grams. We will follow the instructions and the first thing to fit is a winch drum into the boom butt. And you fix it in place using two very long pins. It's a nice touch that this drum is removable. And we'll carry on by removing the masking tape that secures the rope. Now we'll move on to heavy duty assembly. And we'll fix the crawler tracks to the cross frame. We start off by fixing two bolts to the tabs at the top of the track frames. They slide in very easily. And then you fix them in place with these little Pac-Man shaped spring clips. They are very tight and put a dent in your finger during installation. With the top bolts installed we can then hook the track frame onto the cross frame. And the fit of the parts is very good. Next, to secure the assembly, there are two bolts to fit at the bottom. And these are a bit more fiddly to get to. Once that's all done, we've then completed the crawler assembly. We then have to fit on two large ballast trays, which fit onto the cross frame. But they don't just hook in, they have to be positively secured. And it's a slightly awkward job best done with the crawler track assembly upside down. The two small screws can then be inserted in the upside down ballast tray and then the tray can be roughly put in position. A screwdriver is included with the model and with some careful work you can locate and tighten the screws. With that done you can flip over the crawler assembly just as if it was a pancake. The instructions then tell you to put the walkways on, that's probably best done later as we'll see. The next piece of heavy assembly is to put the crane on top of the crawler assembly. And it is secured by four bolts complete with spring clips. Now we get on to everybody's favourite task which is reeving up the A-frame. The A-frame winch is already loaded with one continuous length of rope. But I'm not really sure why this was done because you actually have to take it all off to do the reeving. So to try and stop a big bird's nest tangle, the rope has been unwound onto a temporary drum. The instructions then tell you to cut one end of the rope. And then it has an overcomplicated way of showing how the rope gets fixed back onto the drum, when in reality you can just glue the free end. To do the reeving it's best to set up a temporary frame and then get on with it. After a test of mental fortitude and patience we have this result. And the instructions then tell us to move on and put ballast weights into the ballast trays. And as you can see it would be easier doing this before putting the walkways on. Next we have two side ballast trays to fit and they hang. And then it's time for the screwdriver again. 
and it's good that these fixings are made very secure. The same is also true of a big ballast tray that goes at the back. And at this point it's worth noticing that there are tiny graphics applied, even though they're going to be hidden by ballast weights. At this point we'll also fit the first of many handrails, and we can start adding some weight onto the ballast trays. One thing this model does set a record for is the number of handrail pieces that have to be fitted, and they are nearly all of the push-in variety. That does mean that not all of them end up being a tight fit, so you might want to use some plastic putty to pack some of the holes. There are ladders to fit and these ones go onto the cross frames, and one to the cab gets pinned. The instructions also suggest using glue to fit some of the handrails onto the cab deck. And the fitting of the handrails just goes on and on. We can now go back to the heavy assembly and start building up the boom. The first thing to note is the fit of the parts is very good, and they are fitted together with larger than usual nuts and bolts. A small spanner is provided to help you during the tightening up, but in reality some of the clearances are too small to use it, so sometimes the nuts need to be held with small pliers. In the box is a bag containing two very thin bolts, and it looks like they fit as shown here. There's also a pin to secure the fly jib strut. A nice inclusion with the model are erection outriggers, and these get pinned into place on one of the track frames. With the boom, jib and pendants fully pre-assembled, we can offer it up to the crane. The connection is a snug fit, and it's best to drift the holes into line before trying to insert the bolt. And the bolts are of the same style as we've already seen, with spring clips on the end. The final job is to connect up the pendants, weave up the hooks, and we're good to go. Track frames are very well detailed, and in addition to the lead pair graphic, there are tiny graphics. There's also a modelled lifting lug. The metal track pads are wide and thin, and they are textured. The handrails on the model are metal, and they're a good looking scale, and the walkways have an excellent mesh pattern. The toothed slewing ring can also be seen. There are many tiny graphics, and they're all very sharp. The crane cab has also got excellent walkways outside, and other details include a mirror and tinted glass, and there are window wipers. The detail inside the cab is also really good. The rope on the winch drums is good quality, and the winch drums are finely modelled. Other details within the crane include the exhaust system and mesh walkways. The A-frame has more nice walkways, and the erection cylinder is modelled, and it might be usable if you remove the friction pin. As you would expect, all of the pulleys on the model are metal. The construction of the boom is very heavy duty, particularly the boom butt, and it's also very well detailed with mesh walkways, and there's also an internal ladder. There are more metal handrails around the winches. The pendant bars are all made of metal and secured by brass nuts and bolts. And the main boom sections are well cast. They have mesh walkways on top, and there are ladders at the end of the boom sections. Moving to the fly jib, and it is also very well modelled. The lattice work is very precise. There are metal pulleys and small dolly wheels at the end, and the two hooks shown here are satisfying metal parts. There's also a third intermediate sized hook block in the box. Also in the box for special occasions is an NZG load plate. Let's start with the track frames and they roll extremely easily. They seem very well engineered parts and you have to remember that they're going to carry a lot of weight. And in fact if you're careful you can move the crane just by moving the crawler tracks. Just keep an eye on the swinging load. The model has self erection jacks which could be used, and in terms of basic functions, the model does rotate smoothly, 
although because of the very high loadings the review model wasn't rock solid on the turntable. All of the winch drums work in the same way, there's a key that you insert and you push it to disengage the brake. These work very well and they're very sure footed. The crane cab can be tilted up and it holds the pose. Of course one of the most impressive things about this model is its huge size. And bear in mind out of the box it only comes in a simple configuration. But you can probably expect that there will be other add-on kits to give you different possibilities. In this configuration the crane would often be used on wind turbine work. So it looks great if you've got a suitable load. For a size comparison here's the crawler track from an LR1600 crane. And this model is much bigger and heavier. Let's do a dim check on what we've built. And it's about 7 feet high or 214 centimetres. But with another 19 inches or 48 centimetres in the box, this is officially a ceiling buster. This is a hugely impressive model of the LR11000 crawler crane by NZG. However, there's been no compromising in providing lots of high quality detailing, and all of the functionality of the model works to a high standard also. So, if you want the kind of model that will impress anybody who sees it, then this model by NZG is excellent. Music